Welcome to Real Herbalism Radio, show 297, recorded at Big Dog Studios in Eugene, Oregon. Today's show is brought to you by practicalherbalist.com. Get info on plants and plant medicine that's supported by science and tradition at thepracticalherbalist.com. We make herbalism practical and easy. Thepracticalherbalist.com. Mud Pod Design. Is your site ADA compliant? Do you know if it is? Mud Pod Design can help you by running a free website accessibility audit. Just go to mudpawdesign.com slash free dash ADA dash audit today. Now here are your hosts. I'm Candace Hunter. I'm Patrick Hunter. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Real Herbalism, Herbalism Radio. Radio. All right, Patrick. Holistic medicine and the extracellular matrix. Are Every you time re- you say matrix, I think of the movie. So It's a little bit like that. It's like a mind shift. <laughs> it was for me, at least. Yeah, to read that that you know a cell isn't uh, an individual and it's not not, a, not an isolated you know um, entity unto itself. It 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 is part of something. You know. Yeah, I mean the way that I was taught science and and you know science at that level at the cellular level was pretty much that the cell is the thing and then all that's around it is just sort of this liquidy stuff that doesn't do much. Just floats. Medium just, just yeah, floats just into medium, it. It yeah. doesn't, you know. Yeah, and there might be a few strings of polymers and things in there, but, uh, you know. And the way that Matthew Wood was describing it, which was based on actual scientific research that he himself did not do, but comes from ages ago, pretty much says, yeah, that liquid and floaty stuff makes a lot more difference than you'd think based on the way that modern science decided to go and what they're hanging on to. And for me, part of what made that such a revelation was that that finally puts into words something that I've known and I've known for a really long time. Mm -hmm. It's just like an intrinsic of courseness, you know, this is just the way it is. Right. But I never had words for it, which has been for me a struggle throughout much of my life. There's a lot of things I know, but I don't know what the words are to I have no language for it. I just know it because I just know it. Yeah. Do you know? Mm-hmm. And that he gave words to the concept that the cell itself is, of course, important, but the matrix that it's floating in is also important. And the intelligence or the spirit of things isn't necessarily in the cell, it's in the matrix. And the cell is a very important part of said matrix. So the herbs work because they move the matrix. They offer up the idea. They they teach your body how to heal the bruise. They remind your body that it knows already how to reduce the fever. That's what the herbs are doing is they're talking through the matrix to all the aspects of your being. They are not trying to force your body to change. They're saying, hey, You know, if you just open the pores up, the heat will go down and all the offending germs or bacteria will go with it, Mm -hmm. you know, and it'll all, you know, so there you do that. Let's see if that works. They remind your body of its own innate intelligence. And I mean, honestly, it's, when you think about just how life is, a lot of times that whole microcosm, macrocosm thing is real. What you know what the microcosm, macrocosm is, right? Well, I know. In, <laughs> You're in, giving me this look. Well, like. I know in, in theory what they are, but for, I guess, for the for the lay people like myself, <laughs> why don't you define them? <laughs> so the microcosm and macrocosm theory suggests that what happens on the small scale also happens on the large scale and vice versa. So you can look at that from the, you know, microscopic going up into the size of your body, or you can look at it, which I often do because it's easier for me to visualize, Mm -hmm. is what will happen, what happens in my life, like what's happening in me internally will be reflected in how my house looks or how my room looks, you know, the space I'm living in. Right. If the space I'm living in is messy and I'm feeling messy inside but I can't seem to deal with the emotional messiness or the chemical messiness that's going on. Maybe I've got hormonal imbalances or I'm struggling with an illness like cancer or 
inflammation, diabetes, whatever the messiness might be, one of the ways that I can fix the messiness, since I can't seem to figure out how to handle it internally, is to clean up my environment. Mm -hmm. You know, put all the clothing away and clean up, just clean up. Right. Better organize. It's part of the principles of Feng Shui works on that same kind of level that you have these things outside ordered and that will cause order in, internally. Right. And it works on any set of scales. So you can talk about the entire world. The whole globe is the macrocosm and this country is a microcosm. Or you can talk about this person's heart and it's the macrocosm and the red blood cells are the microcosm. Okay. So you can you can use it on any scale you want. And so when I'm looking at holistic medicine and, a, and the extracellular matrix, so I'm looking at what, what Matthew Wood has proposed and the idea of just shifting our thinking to recognizing that, well, the cell is important. It is not the key to making the changes. It's the environment and the spirit that needs to change. And I've noticed that on the human scale that a lot of times the people that I've worked with um, from an herbal perspective, the issues that they're having are happening in their bodies and their body is, my language of it has been your body's trying to tell you the things you need to change in your thinking or in your emotions, the places you need to heal your spirit. So you heal your spirit and then the physicality starts to change and fix itself. Right. And I've noticed that that seems to work really, really well. So a lot of times when people have come to me and wanted help with herbs and herbalism or, you know, wanted help, be, help with insomnia or whatever, you know, whatever their issue is or anxiety or whatever. Right. Um, or like, you know, one person was a Crohn's disease type of issue. I give them herbs, but I'm listening also to the emotional stuff. It's like an energetic undercurrent, and I, I call it emotion or energy because I don't really have language for it. But I think what I'm really doing is listening to what their extracellular matrix is trying to say. And it doesn't always come from a place of language, so the plants know how to work with that place. So I'm just saying, well, you know... You've got some issues going on. Let's look at some chamomile and some lemon verbena because in my mind, the because that I can maybe language is you're also struggling with feeling very disempowered in your life. You're feeling like you're stuck. Mm -hmm. And the way that you want to express yourself isn't accepted. So let's start with some chamomile that helps to build your center of your, your solar plexus, helps you to feel more empowered to speak your mind in a way other people will listen. Lemon verbena takes a little edge off of that, reduces the pressure of the anxiety or the, even now I'm having a hard time coming up with the right words <laughs> to say what lemon verbena does, but it, they work together very well to help reduce inflammation in the digestive system and to help a person find their own power again. Once you find your own power, your digestion starts to clear because you have the power to digest whatever it is you're facing and make proper use of it, to weed out the stuff that's wasteful and just get rid of it and no longer try to hang on to it and feel like it's so important. You know, so it's this complex way of thinking about it. And I've noticed that a lot of times the people who are, who I've helped with herbs, it, that, that's really what they need but they don't want therapy and they're not in the right place for therapy. They're not trying to dig into big, hairy, scary stuff. Their bodies are just saying, hey, these things are happening. So, you know, help their bodies to change. And then they oftentimes I end up hearing back later on, oh, you know, this has changed in my life. This has gotten better. That's gotten better. So it all, and I'm not the only, I mean, a lot of herbalists find this. Right, right. You know. And the two are so linked. Well, one of the things that was really interesting for for me to hear from you um, when you were talking with him and and reading the book, you, you it was almost like a for you it seemed like there was a validation of the way that you have been using and practicing herbal healing for twenty years. 
Yeah. You know, and it it was, it almost felt like, you know, there was a, for you, when I was watching you, it was this revelation for you to say, you know, oh my God, that's my jam. It wasn't yeah. the, the clinical herbalist and it wasn't, you know, this type of herbalist. It was, you know, the energetic side of it, which Michael Wood really does have, or Matthew Wood has that you know, have yeah. that. Um, so that was really cool to see that and how, what you were just talking about of this, this overall, you know, feeling of it is something that you can grasp and latch into and have that, um, intuition part of it that many others don't, you know, they'll, they'll, um, rely on a set of, I don't want to say flow charts, but a set of factors to make their decisions and try to, you know, Figure out the herb that works based on these uh, ailments, symptoms, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, whereas you sometimes will, and I've watched you, you know, you know, Candace, is this herb going to be good for me? And you'll, you'll grab it and you hold on to it. And then you're like, yep, no, it's perfect. Or no, it's, it, this isn't, and that's not the right energy. Yeah. And I've seen you do that multiple times. And sometimes I look at you and go, what? <laughs> She's a kook. You know, <laughs> yeah. huh? what? And, you know, you've even asked me, you know, is this good for me? And give, give me something and I'll, I'll hold it. And, you know, and I don't know if it's there or not, but sometimes it'll be just this weird twinge. And I think it's about learning to listen. And I think you've mm -hmm. learned to listen. And same thing with Matthew, what he's learned to listen. And that's that part of that um, you know, dynamic between the two, you know, the macro, micro, and how the um, cellular matrix all works together in that in that hole and and it's been really interesting to watch you how do you know you're hitting the big time when you see folks wearing your logo out and about ace high graphics can help you get your logo out there with custom design apparel like hats and hoodies and tees with custom bags and more ace high graphics can do small runs as little as 10 items or hundreds to meet your needs will help you be seen no matter how large or small you are visit acehighgraphics.com today it's almost like, you know, you, 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 the other, you know, last week you were, you know, you were like, whoa, this is, this is it. I mean, this, duh. I mean, I've never been able to put it in words before, but this is it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, it's kind of cool. It was kind of cool watching you come up, you know, real, your realization. Yeah. And it, it also, the other thing about that, I have had a struggle with words my whole life. I've struggled with not being able to find the right words to communicate the idea or the experience that I've had. Only in your speaking, I would say that was the case. When you're writing is not that case. But even then, I mean, even when I'm writing, I I, I sometimes struggle. I mean, it, the words will flow down. I, I have as many stops and starts as I'm writing sometimes, as I'm like typing or writing by hand, as I do as I'm speak while I'm speaking. I just know how to flow through it a little more easily. It works at a much faster speed. I can type way faster than I can talk. Sure. You know, um, but even at that, I have struggled with, you know, some of the concepts that I know. I don't know. I can see them if sight is even the right word. It's a, it's like having a sixth sense, you know, not even just the like standard five or even six, maybe it's the seventh sense. I don't know. But it's like just something that I can see, but I can't quite language. And I know it's truth, but I can't, I can't come up with even a metaphor that helps me. And it's been rare in my life that I've run across people that seem to struggle with words in the same way that I do and that can see these things and understand at these levels and yet not be able to communicate them clearly. Right. And have to really, I mean, I've had to do part of why I've read and experimented and tried as many as the things as I have. I mean, it's a ridiculous list. If I sat down and write down, wrote down, it's like hundreds of books that I've read and tried or experimented with. It's right. not like I, you know, I'm not even including the stuff that I just read. Mm -hmm. It's only the only, it's still a huge list because I've been looking for the words and Matthew Wood does the same thing. He's, he's found, he's found his route and he's, but he's struggled with how to put these things that he knows intrinsically into words. 
and how to language it and how to conceptualize it so that other people can understand and he can communicate. I mean, sometimes I've thought, oh, it'd be great if we could just all have like a Star Trek style, like Vulcan, Bay, what is, was the name of the Counselor Troy? But not Majoran. I keep saying Majoran. Beta Z. Beta Z kind of thing where we all can just like communicate without having to use words. And we just like see and experience and share our stuff that way. It'd be so much easier. Yeah. It would be a really different society. <laughs> so, but I mean, yeah. there've been times where I kind of have wished that we could do that, that I could somehow find a way to communicate with even just one person that way, because walking around, knowing what I know, being able to see the things I see and having the concepts and not being able to connect, not being able to language it, not being able to share that with anyone. It's really lonely, you know? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but at the same time, it's also challenging because I still, I want to keep on call, always trying to find ways to find the language to communicate so that somebody else, even one other person can learn and grow in their own lives, mm -hmm. you know, and help, help anybody. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. No, I, I, I do know. And I mean, like you said, you, that's something you have definitely struggled with, um, you know, I think if, if everyone, anyone saw us argue, they would, they would definitely say that's not a true statement that you know exactly what you're going to say when you're saying <laughs> how you say it. But, uh, when you're trying to uh, communicate a point or, uh, you know, I remember you, you know, some of your stories, you know, when you were, you were a small child and you couldn't communicate what you were, you were thinking, you know, like you were, you were trying to tell your mom you wanted to get into quilting and you didn't know, understand that was, the word quilt is what you needed. Yeah. Yeah, a lot and of times you were using been, mosaic and fabric mosaics and stuff, which put your mom on a completely different path. Yeah, than and she had no idea. She had what no I was idea trying to say. what yeah. you were trying to say, and that's just one example of many of the things that you have gone through. You know, and I think there was even something recently where you were trying to explain it to me, and I was I I, I couldn't understand you. Yeah, you know, and I, and I was like going down this one road. And you're like, no, 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 that's not it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and the idea of speaking metaphor and thinking in metaphor, the way that he was talking about, like he said, the Western language is all about logic. A follows B follows C follows right. D, and that that idea that that the way that he talked i can't even remember the well, actual the, proper words but the yeah, the like, indigenous way yeah. of thinking to me that's the natural way of thinking that's the way language should be that's the way we should communicate but it's not the way we communicate my brain is structured for that method most of the people around me are structured for linear thinking kinds of english yeah. you know we're all english speakers and and we're of european descent so that's the way a majority of the people that I encounter, their brains were built that way. I don't know why mine wasn't built that way because I grew up in a, you know, Midwestern American middle income family that spoke primarily English. My grandparents, you know, and my aunts sometimes spoke Polish with each other, but never with me. Right. You know, but even then, though, that would still be a linear language. But it's very linear, yeah. yeah. And they all—I mean, I don't know anyone else in the family that I'm aware of who thinks in this way. I've always thought in this way. I've never not thought in this way, and I've struggled my whole life to try to figure out how to bridge that gap. And until somebody hands me the concept, like Matthew Wood handing me the concept of the extracellular matrix, and that's language. That finally, I'm like, oh, finally, I have a have language to wrap around this idea that's always been there. And I move from those places of non-words. I'm comfortable with moving from that space mm -hmm. because it's always right. I never go wrong when I follow that. And I have definitely gone wrong when I follow the linear thinking. I don't always, but you know, I'm more likely to. Um, but how do I explain to other people? And nobody wants to trust you if you can't explain to them in language they understand. I understand that. Hard, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. If, if because they don't see it as um, not communicating in a way for them as more of like you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you know exactly. You, you know, and that's yeah. not the case, but but it is that well because they can't follow you, and yeah. so they must in their minds, which is that's 
maybe the majority of people think linearly. I mean, I know I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, we in our culture have been against intuition and you know, empathic understanding of things and a lot of this imagination, you know, all of that stuff has not been really that prized in our culture. I mean, look at things as simple as like the graphic design industry, where it used to be that if you're a graphic designer, you were an artist who did your art for business purposes. Yeah. And now everybody is a graphic designer because they can go on to what is the name of that website? <laughs> and make their own social I don't media know graphics. That I, I don't know whatever. that I want to say it because me being as a graphic designer, I want to promote that. <laughs> right. But you understand. I mean, it's yes. it's we've uh, yeah. commoditized creativity. We've commoditized yeah. intuition. We've commoditized all these things and made it not as powerful as it once was. You know? Yes, that is exactly it. You know, commoditization of all of these things is is not great for the people that are that are talented in those in those fields you know right. um and and you know, whether it's graphic designers or it's herbalists or it's whatever i mean when people can get it a mass for nothing they devalue what you do right um right you know but yeah i mean that's a the whole other discussion we could have <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah. i mean Someone like me who doesn't have strong language for an awful lot of what I know ends up being swept aside because I can't articulate in terms that everybody else will understand. I can't put into scientific language the things I know. A lot of the things I know, I mean, the plants literally do just shout out, hey, this person needs me. I want to be a part of this healing team. I mean, I, I hear them or I see them or I've smell them or taste them or right. they, they show up and it's clear to me this person needs this i may not know why some of the people i've worked with are just fine to say okay you don't have to explain to me why i'll just take whatever formula you give me that's the easiest for me i don't have to sit there and try to explain or justify other people most people want to know what's in there and why so then i have to try to come up with why am i picking this herb that doesn't seem to have anything to do like there's one person that was having struggling with insomnia and I knew Damiana was an important person for that or important herb for that individual. It was the most important herb. Damiana is an energizing herb. It is not used for insomnia normally. Mm -hmm. It is also a related to sexual function and the individual in question was definitely not complaining about impotence, you know? Right. Uh, but Damiana was what that individual needed because there was some shifting on the sexual plane, if that's the right language. Mm -hmm. And after taking Damiana for a short while, the report I got back was, oh, yeah, sleeping much better. Thank you. This is awesome. Oh, and by the way, the fertility thing is working better now. Hmm. Sperm counts up or whatever it was, you know? I mean, I was just like, but what's the, what's the language that I can use mm -hmm. to describe why would Damiana help you with insomnia? doesn't make a lot of sense. Right. If you look at, if you look at the, the, you know, this is Damiana, this is what it's known to do. This is how it's going to work. And then that one might be for a person that follows that linear path might say, well, Damiana is not going to work for you. And these are the reasons why, where you came off and said, huh? All these things, yeah. You need Damiana, yeah. And that, you know, someone else might be counter to that. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Yeah. I mean, you know, we we've known people that you know we've gotten into debates with people like that. You know, mm -hmm. where you know they'll say, "No, you need this herb," and and I've I've heard you talk to other herbalists this way, and yeah, you know, it's it's been an interesting conversation because they're like totally blown away by some of the things that you'll come up with, but then. You know, you can be proven right, but by this, like, say, this person saying that was the right thing. It was it amazing. Worked. You know? It worked, and you know, ultimately, it's all about what works. It's all about what works. So sure. yeah, I mean, talking with Matthew was was refreshing for me. Well, I, I <laughs> guess you could say. <laughs> well, refreshing is is if that's the right word. I think right? it for you it was validation. Yeah, it was eye opening. It was. It was like coming home. It's like I've been on this long hero's journey kind of thing. You know, I, I left, I started, began with Matthew Wood and, and Dawn. Yeah. 
and Matthew Wood's book of herbal wisdom. That was the first herb book that I actually read. Mm -hmm. You know, so I started there, and then I've been on this long journey through chemistry and Guido Masse and and so much science. I mean, so many science perspectives, and then Ayurveda and and traditional Western herbalism and Chinese medicine and, you know, all right. these other energetic things and through all of them. And, and I've gone down the spirit shamanic style paths and, you know, Maya Toll and so many of the other herbalists who work with the plants on a more spiritual type of level and emotional healing and the flower essences. And I mean, I've, I've explored lots and lots and lots of different ways of looking at the same groupings of plants, to be quite honest. I mean, ultimately you end up looking at, there, I'll pick up a few new plants, each each different perspective shift I try or each different herbalist, but ultimately, you know, it's the same 100 plants, 200 plants that we're looking at over and over from all these different perspectives. And I found myself very lost at times and very frustrated and, feeling like, okay, is this all that there is? You know, like I went mm -hmm. on this huge journey and I conquered all these really huge challenges. And then I read Holistic Medicine and the Extracellular Matrix and got to talk to Matthew Wood and I feel like I've returned home. I don't know what that means. I don't know what's next, but it's interesting. There you go. Full circle. Full circle. Nice. So I guess with that, it's time to... Put an herb on it. The statements made about herbs and products on this podcast have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration, FDA, and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided on this podcast or any affiliated websites is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other healthcare professional. You should not use the information on this podcast and its affiliated websites for a diagnosis or treatment of any health problem. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new vitamins, supplements, diet, or exercise program before taking any medication, or if you have or suspect you might have a health problem. Any testimonials, questions, or case studies are based on individual results and do not constitute a guarantee that you will achieve the same results.